The phone rings. It's my friend Tony, and he asks me, Brad, where in the Bible does it say that you should follow the Pope? It's 1993, maybe 94, I'm 18, 19. I think I've mentioned in other videos how I grew up Catholic, but I wasn't really practicing my faith. All I really cared about was playing guitar in my band. And my friend Tony, who played bass in that same band, he grew up as a Bible Christian, but he also was, wasn't really practiced in his faith. The only time we ever talked about religion is if we were analyzing the artwork on the cover of an Iron Maiden album. So he calls me on the phone and starts drilling me on Catholic belief. Where in the Bible does it say this? Why do Catholics do that? You, you know the routine. What I didn't know is the night before, he went out and ran into some other Bible Christians, and he got saved. Somewhere in the process of getting saved, he mentioned to them that sometimes he went to Mass with me. They informed him that that was really bad, and they challenged him to confront me about my faith. So that's where this phone call came from. So as he's drilling me, I'm not really taking any of this seriously until I hear somebody whispering in the background, ask him about Mary, ask him about the Pope. And then I realize this is a setup. I've been set up. So now it's a matter of Catholic pride. I am going to defend the faith. The problem is you've heard the term crisis in catechesis, right? Well, I think for many younger Catholics, that term is kind of abstract. But in the 80s, we actually really had a crisis in catechesis. Let me demonstrate. Here it is. The one book that I had on religion in my entire house. I actually started flipping through this thing to try and answer his questions about the Pope and Mary. I think I actually thought I might find a picture of JP2 in this book that would explain to me why Catholics have a Pope. Suffice to say, I wasn't able to answer a single question that they asked me. By the end of the phone conversation, I had felt pretty stupid, and I absolutely did not defend the faith. But it did start me on this journey to actually learn my faith, to actually discover what it is that I believe and why I believe it. So the experience that we, we know today of being able to walk into a Catholic bookstore and see rows and rows of Scott Hahn books... That, that didn't really exist back then, not, not the way we know it today anyways. So I think those of us who grew up in the, in the time of the crisis of catechesis can really appreciate now why it is so important to, to know our faith and to be able to explain the reasons why we believe what we believe and why it's so important to read good Catholic apologetics books. So we want to put together a list of the best apologetics books and we want to ask you to help us put that list together. So we're going to do a giveaway. In the comments to this video, please share with us the name of the, of the best apologetics book you ever read and the reason why. And what we'll do is we'll pick the best comment and we'll, we'll give away a book from, from the list that we ultimately make. Now, uh, there'll be uh, in the description of this video, we will put the rules for the giveaway. We want to take it for granted that the Bible, the Summa, the, the, writing, the actual writings of the Church Fathers, not, not Mike Aquilina's actual books, but the actual writings of the Church Fathers, we want to take that stuff for granted, that that should already be on the list. So what we're talking about is the modern Scott Hahn, Carl Keating, Patrick Madrid, uh, Mike Aquilina, those books, that, that's what we're talking about. So please share that with us in the, in the comments below. Thank you for watching this video, and we will see you in the next one.